Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that, unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right. This minute. Welcome to one more edition of Politics and Radamic Berto is your host. And as it turns out, as you can see, Brio is not working, but the others are right now. Welcome to Politics All Right. We're going to have a great show for you today. In fact, in fact, in fact, it's about the newsletter that I sent out this morning because it has a lot of information. You know, I had an interview that I wanted to play today, but then after reading the, you know, getting an email from one of you guys. And after getting the email from one of you guys, also uh, giving it some thoughts, I went ahead and wrote a little short blog post within the newsletter. And then I said, you know what? This is going to cover more than I want or more than have, you know, I don't, I don't want to give the interview that we're going to have less than it deserves. So anyhow, we have our peeps already here. Welcome aboard. Bruce Pollard says, good day. Bruce, it seems to me like you are likely 100% recovered. Tell me the truth. How are you feeling, sir? Uh, E2247, of course, how does he enter the fold? He says, hello, relatives. I trust you all had a great holiday. You know what? I had a great holiday. The wife made a great meal. The daughter is here, spunky as usual. Well, you know, Given the father hell as usual, but hey, that's a part of the game. That's what we signed up for, right? Bada bada Wilts. Hi from Michigan. She's up. Great to see you. Bada bada, how are you doing? AVQ, of course, AVQ has our initial research of the day ready to go. So let's start. Let's start with the best news from the weekend. NASA's revolutionary James Webb Space Telescope successfully launches to space. The launch marks the beginning of one of the most anticipated NASA missions in decades, a program that promises to transform how we study the deepest part of the universe. Here's a little thing for my dear brothers and sisters. Remember, what these telescopes see are billions of years, million, actually billions of years in the past. So we're just discovering it now, but it has occurred billions of years ago. But you know, is, is that fascinating or what? But it gives us an idea of where we're going in space. So that is great, great, great. Mikael Rodnin says, my COVID hospitalization top, or New York COVID hospitalization tops 5K for the first time since February. Admissions among New York City kids soar. Pediatric COVID hospitalization in New York have doubled since December 5th. They've quintupled in New York City since that time. The death rate for Omicron remains low but the damage it's causing is widespread. I worry not only about people's health, but how many families are going to go bankrupt because of this. All because we don't have the right kind the healthcare policies in this country. We're going to talk a little bit about that as well. Michael Rodnin says, Jayapal warns political disaster looms if Democrats fail to deliver in the new year. We cannot underestimate the urgency to act, especially as COVID surgeon and so many constituencies, seniors, people of color, working and young people and disillusion. Representative Pramila Vajayapal says Democrats must prove that their voices and their votes matter and that we can produce tangible economic assistance. The moment of for the Biden administration and Congress can either lead to our greatest failure or our greatest success. I want to stop. Them. You know what? No, I'm not going to stop here because that is also a part of the discussion we're going to have based on what I wrote about humanity. Second, the last one from Radnin, broken promises cannot deter the path to build back better. 
we are calling on the president to use executive. That's what Jayapal says. We are calling on the president to use executive action to immediately improve people's lives. Talking executive action will also make clear to those who hinder Build Back Better that the White House and Democrats will deliver for Americans. Representative Jayapal said, for as I'm concerned, the status quo cannot be maintained as this is the Democrats' last chance to muster. Do right by the promises you made for the people, either through passing legislation or just doing temporary executive orders, and get these popular provisions into effect. Or watch the 2022 election a bloodbath. But not only, look, you know what is so funny about that, Michael Rudden, who brought that, that story to us? And to all of you beautiful people watching right now, let me tell you what's interesting. If the president starts using executive orders with the right narrative, Republicans and Republicans and centrists are stopping me from giving you what you voted for. They're stopping me from providing humanity. And you make the message that these guys are evil for supporting corporations and not you. And that were, therefore, I am taking it under my command to do that and take care of you. Now, if you want us to continue this service that we're providing you, vote more progressives into office. And then we can start seeing results. Okay, let's see. E2247 says, hello, relatives. Um, we got, let's see, audio is good. Thank you so kindly. Believe it or not, I had to rush and do that audio because for some reason our wireless is not functioning. Don't ask me why, but uh, it's on me that I didn't test it out before so that's on me. So we had about 10 seconds delay. E2247, yes to the VP Harris. Right now we're about to take ourselves off the map as a role model if we let people destroy one of the most important pillars of a democracy, which is free, fair elections. You see, the problem is we were never a democracy. We're trying to be a democracy. We're a representative republic that is not governed by the majority, but governed by the land, by land by capital. And that presents a problem. It never presented a problem because that never skewed away from what the people's vote really were in the past. But now it's diametrically opposed to what people actually want. That is something we have to be very cognizant of. Continuing, let's see, E2247 also says, have, uh, uh, Iran nuclear task resumed today with China talks. France, Germany, Russia, UK, and Iran as all aside will negotiation, but talks remain very high stakes, risk falling apart. Uh, the JCPOA, that's the thing we jumped, for those who don't know that, that's what we jumped out of when, um, when brother <laughs> Trump, who knows nothing about foreign policy, came in. Bad Bada Wills, welcome aboard. Uh, Sisquat, or Siscat, from, uh, where are you? You're on Twitch. Welcome aboard. Greetings. Bruce Pollard says, I am 100% for weakness due to MS, working to get some strength back, but it will take some time. Bruce, another one of my heroes, you, but you've handled MS impeccably. We've been out several times since um, you've been diagnosed, and I mean, um, the brother is still doing all his, his activism, folks. He's out there taking calls at KPFT before this pandemic and all of that. You keep up your great work, brother. Uh, Bruce says, infrared, what we don't see with our eyes, exactly. Uh, Barbara Wilt says she's from the Upper Peninsula. You know, I've always wondered, you know, I think that is the only state other than, let's say, someplace like Alaska or, or um, well, that's not true because a lot of states have barrier islands or some sort of islands. But I always find it ironic. You have two, these two big pieces of mass from Michigan, right? When I was in Detroit, it was like, oh, yeah, this is just a lower part of Michigan, you get another part of Michigan that is like a completely different state, but it's still Michigan. I always thought that was kind of cute. All right, Peggy Lopez says, hi all back in Red Bluff, California, and cold is setting in, so no strawberries for me. What? You mean you're not going to send us any strawberries, Peggy Lopez? What, a cold came in and wiped it out or something? Wes says, build back better, 666. Oh, wow, B is like a six. Okay. You know something? It would take you guys. You know, I, I, another friend of mine, another right wing friend of mine, had another thing, another message that she used for. It wasn't Build Back Better, it was from some other thing. You guys are great with coming up with acronyms using us against ourselves, man. You know, but I still love you, man. Wes says, the world knows Biden the terrible. No, I don't think he's Biden the terrible. I think he's cool. 
Although, I mean, well, I'm not going to go there. ABQ says, West, funny how Republicans have pushed hundreds of voter suppression bills, and you think it's the Democrats who are damaging democracy? Well, you know, the truth is, we have to talk to West. We have to be kind to West. You see, West is of the belief that we, those of us that are progressives, that somehow we are evil, we are the worst thing. And I always tell you guys the story of talking to a woman in Starbucks, a, cons a, a young, or not actually a middle-aged conservative white woman who saw me in there all of the time and she wanted to know what was I doing there. So I think she assumed that I was one of those Republicans in Kingwood and she wanted to talk and talk and talk. And we talk healthcare without mentioning anything. And those of you who are on YouTube, please folks remember to give me a thumbs up right now. I need your thumbs up so we can keep these things moving forward. But anyhow, she talks and, and you know, we, we had a great conversation and by the time it was all over, she was all into Medicare for all. I never used the word Medicare for all. We just described what we would like healthcare to be like. And it turns out this upstanding conservative Republican woman loved Medicare for all. And I felt guilty and I said, man, you know, I am very we want you to know I'm a real left-wing progressive guy. And what we were talking about is Medicare for all. And she looked at me and she said, Oh, but you're so nice. And my answer to her is like, go have some dinner with the the ladies who lunch or something like that, the progressives, who, liberals who lunch, you're going to find that most people are nice people. And I kind of talked about that in two, in my PDR, my last PDR newsletter, I spoke about that. This one, we have some other stuff to talk about. All right. So remember that don't, don't hold it against West. West has been indoctrinated. West, I know you don't believe it. Uh, yeah, we can get to 10 West. I know you've been indoctrinated, but the fact that you come here all of the time, West, tells me something. That there's just something you are hearing here that gets to you because, you know, your troll, if you were just a troll, you wouldn't actually put, you know, sometimes I actually see some good stuff that you put out there. So I guess you're not just a troll. Anyhow, um, let's go ahead and talk about West. I am with Jesus. Yeah, that's what most Republicans say even as they don't want to give children health care, even as they don't want to feed the hungry, even as they, you remember that, that story in the Bible where Jesus said, uh, there's this guy and he, he came to the guy's house several times. He came as a, as a poor guy, he came as a peasant, he came as all these different things, right? But this guy's waiting for Jesus. He's waiting for Jesus. And then when Jesus, in his regalia appears to the guy uh, Jesus said the, the guy said uh, you know he hadn't seen him before etc Jesus reminded him I've been here you just didn't want to see me because you know what that poor man that you didn't help that was Jesus that other person that you didn't help that was Jesus you know back in my days when I was a Christian I used to have all these stories down I in fact I preached a couple of times uh, youth, youth day, you know, um, sometimes, what can I say? So uh, it, it's important for you to understand this. Uh, the people that speak the most about how moral they are, the people that speak the most about what they want to do, I asked them several times, many times, look, and by the way, this doesn't only go for conservatives, okay? Let me be very frank here. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to hit up my liberals in a minute. This doesn't only go for conservatives. But the people that sing glory, glory, hallelujah, how much good they do. Many times you find that when you analyze it, that the same deficiencies that they're seeing in others, it's actually a reflection of themselves. And it goes for progressives as well. I've told you guys many times the stories about me going out to my progressive, uh, my great progressive net roots and other places. And the same prejudices that I would expect over at my right wing friends. I see it there in a more antiseptic manner. So, um, and, I, and I speak out on it. I speak out on it. And we all should. So, Brother West, when you're talking about all of this, keep that in mind. And keep coming here to Politics Done Right. Listen up, learn. And if you have something that you need to forward to the people at large to teach something that you know is 
fact base, bring that along as well. Uh, Bruce says, do you think Medicare for all should withhold like the Medicare or just be a line in taxes? No, I think Medicare for all should be a line in taxes. I don't look, I don't want is it's, are the roads that are built. I'm not talking about toll roads. Okay, we're going to get into that as well. I'm not talking about toll roads. When you drive on a road, you don't sit down and try to figure out what the line item was on your tax code to pay for it. But when we talk about Social Security, we know that there's FICA. When we talk about Medicare, we know that there's that three point something percent Medicare tax that we have attached to our tax bill. All of that is really intentional crap to control. What we need to do is see what social services we want to provide as a society to our entire community. And yes, a lot of that can be needs based, etc. And then we as assign our taxes accordingly in a progressive fashion. Meaning if you make ne next to nothing, you pay nothing. But if you're making billions, all of your billions qualify as taxable income. And people say, well, why should I pay more? Because your billions required a lot out of society itself. Absent society, you would not have had those billions. But let's go ahead and uh, let, let's see. So that's my answer to that, uh, Bruce. Michael says, Egberto, one of the screens, though, look at it first. There is a bit objectionable content. Do you want to get me in trouble, brother? Let's see. Uh, Jesus versus Jesus. <laughs> Uh, no, I can't put that one. I mean, well, you know, it's not really bad, but YouTube is going to likely get me because what, what's going to happen is a lot of right-wingers are going to flag it and they're not going to do a, a total examination of the nuance in that particular picture. So I would normally put that up, but today I'm going to refrain, especially since it's around Christmas time. You know those folks are going to be there trying to really pull your channel down. So I'm going to pass on that one, but I'm going to tell people pretty much what it said. In effect, it's trying to show the difference between real Jesus and those who proclaim to follow Jesus. Enough said. Enough said. All right, let's see. Uh, E2247 said he had to be consoled by the Fox News guys. He was with when they booed him. I know, but he's, but he's still trying to go out there and sell vaccines now because he wants to run and a lot of not at a lot of mostly not, not a mostly republican right-wing conservatives are dying uh he has to try to fix it that when he runs again in 24 if he does he can say i was telling them to do it and people only remember the most things we, we we have a shallow shallow recall in this country that we need to fix but it's a shallow recall bruce says there is a jewish version of that story Ah, uh, really? You should tell us sometime. Well, you know, Bruce, I said that uh, you and I had to do an interview for our audience. And by the way, all of you in the audience, that's uh, there. a lot of you have some interesting commentary. I'd like to do every so often a five-minute, ten-minute stint with some of you on camera. Notice what I said, on camera, so that we can present it to the rest of our posse. I think that that, that shows more of the inclusivity that we represent here at politics done right. I've started to do it with another group that I joined uh, called Woke, the, the writers, uh, what is it called again? Writers of Color. What is it? No, writers and editors of color. That's what it is, yeah. And I'd like to do that with some of our posse here as well. Uh, let's see, West Create, uh, IVQ says, West Create a society with a strong social safety net where every one of our citizens have at least enough for a decent living and opportunity for more. Absolutely so. Uh, let's see, Bruce said, maybe read some book chapters too. Yeah, you know, I, that's what, um, I, in fact, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing up an article from my brother um, Hartman today, Tom Hartman, and he does that. He has a segment where he actually reads his book, and I copy him every so often. I copied him with uh, having the, that time of day, so yeah, I like that. I, I may do that, brother. I may do that. Uh, let's see uh, what else we got here. Uh, para ver, para ver. Karen E. says... I'm concerned that the BBB will be further cut into being more of a gimmick legislation. Progressives should withhold your vote for BBB in order to force some meaningful executive action from Biden. Let me tell you where I am at with that, Karen. I, I, I'll be frank. I would be there if uh, I knew that Biden would pass executive actions to cover up or mitigate that, right? 
But I don't know if that Biden is going to do that and, and I, at all. So I, I'll, I'll, I'll back up on that some. I want them to pass a bill just that they can say they won. Of course, the media is going to spin it like, oh, they passed the bill, but look, it's a failure because they didn't get everything that they wanted. We can actually work on that. Uh, we can work on that. So we'll, we'll, we'll think about that. All right, let's see. Uh, Tom C. Welcome, Tom. How have you been? I hope you had a, a happy holiday. Hello from the Lord Peninsula of Michigan. Big echo on YouTube today. Progress over, over oversized. Ah, let me see if I can reduce that echo. What would let me think what would cause I don't know what would be causing that echo other than we're using a different microphone. But I, it, I, I will clean that up. Um, I'll try to clean that up the next time around. Okay, uh, ABQ says over here. Uh, Twitch TV E Willies. Okay, great. So some people get an echo, some people don't have an echo. I'll tell you what, anybody who has a very heavy echo, let me know. I want to make sure it's it's not a channel driven thing and it's a local thing. So you guys can tell me by letting me know what's going on there. All right, let's see what else we got here. Let's see what we got here. Uh, Egberto, there's no echo on Twitch. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, para ver, para ver, para ver. Uh, hence the link, probably so. Exactly. All right, let's go ahead and bring up that story that I wanted, my, my newsletter, because I think, uh, did I put it in here? Don't give up on America. Is that my newsletter? Let's see if that is my newsletter. That's the newsletter. That is the newsletter that I sent out today, and I, I, I want to read it um, verbatim. I'm going to go ahead and do my ask, and then we'll go ahead and do some interpretation. And it went like this, or it goes like this. I got an email from a supporter that almost broke my heart. I immediately came to my senses. I had the following two paragraphs in my Politics Done Right newsletter, not the Substack newsletter, the Politics Done Right newsletter, that I believe elicited the email. This is what I said in that, in that newsletter. The year ahead is enormous. If we live up to our humanity, it will work out well. I had some other stuff that I'm not going to repeat here, but then I said, each of us has the power to incentivize goodness and humaneness with our acts. We need to live up to the expectations of those who need us at each other's throats. Let's use this holiday season to reevaluate ourselves and give others a place to land to do good. That act will let the country live up to its claimed values. You know, we claim to be the bastion on the hill. We claim to be fair. We claim to be a democracy. We claim all these things. Of course, none of it is really absolutely true. We know that when the Constitution was written, it wasn't written for most of us, wasn't written, written for women at all. And it wasn't written, of course, for people of color of any type, whether indigenous or otherwise. And we've progressively moved forward. So, I mean, that's why I said, let's start living up to the values we claim to have. But anyway, the person who wrote me said, I have all but given up on humanity in sort of a dark way. Given what we are living through, this is still the article I'm reading now, given what we're living through, it is not hard to understand why many people feel that way. But he has not just checking out. He was, not, he was just not checking out. That email was likely a message to someone he felt comfortable with, giving him reason to stay checked in and engaged. I see that as my purpose and the purpose of many of us who have a platform to help navigate a system that can fluctuate between too sterile for humanity, inhumanely cruel, and sometimes surprisingly supportive. My response, of course, was not to give up. Farid Zakaria had two historians on his show this Sunday that gave me hope while may scare many. In the, ninth, in the 1860s, we had the Civil War. It was brother against brother. We had uh, people were up in arms about, you know, now they want to say it was, a, it, it's a, it was a war based on states' rights. That's BS. It was a war for those who wanted slavery and those who didn't. That's what the Civil War is about. Don't let anybody change that reality. So that this, the chasm in the country at that time was huge, huge. I mean, families were split, just like we have families split right now between Trump, Trumpists and otherwise. Families were split. So, it's, we've been there. Then we jumped 
to the 1960s, right? In this one decade, JFK, murdered, assassinated. MLK, murdered, assassinated. Malcolm X, murdered, assassinated. Bobby Kennedy, murdered, assassinated. If you are, if you were living then, you would want to know in that decade, how can America, this supposed bastion of democracy, this bastion of sanity, how could all of that happen? When I think about it, I was born in the 60s, okay? And when I think about the amount of stuff that happened in the 60s, I'm trying to think about how people would think about it if we had a president assassinated, one of the major uh, civil rights leaders assassinated, a, a secretary of state, not secretary of state, uh, attorney, a former attorney general assassinated a presidential candidate, and, and another civil rights leader that was taken hold. How would we, if that happened today, compared to what's happening now, we would be like, wow, it's the end of the world. But that happened in the 60s. Not to speak about Kent State, where the National Guards killed students. Not to speak about the Democratic Convention, where they cracked skulls like crazy. All of this in the 60s. Remember, we look at it today and it's like, oh, this is crazy. They had an attack on the Capitol. Hey, the one thing that never happened before was the attack on the Capitol. But we could say we had an attack on the Capitol. In those days, we had the assassination of the, of the likely next president of the United States. And we also had that, the assassination of a president of the United States. So let's, let's put things into perspective here. So let me continue reading that part, okay? In the 1960s, JFK, MLK, Malcolm X, Bobby Kennedy were assassinated. Riots and polarization were high. Understand, none of this was ever started by the masses in the aggregate. None of it. And many plutocrats have always profited from the turmoil. You have all those assassinations, you got all those, you have the, the place blowing up. The plutocrats are ready there to rebuild, rebuild, sell the cement, sell the rocks, sell everything, sell the guns. They are there. They are there. The plutocrats profit going up. When the cops are blowing crap up, they're there to refurnish. When we're blowing countries up, they're there to sell the bombs. The plutocrats always make a profit. But they can only do that, right? We can only go into Iraq, Afghanistan, and all these other places we go into if the people who themselves don't want war go out and say, that's not what we want. But if we're at each other's throats, we can't see anything. We look at everything through the lens of our ideological following, which actually is a silly lens because ideologically, except for things like church and abortion, most Americans want the same thing. So when you go ahead and allow that polarization, you are playing directly into the plutocrats so that they can take advantage, not of the those damn liberals, but also those conservatives. And that is why I preach what I preach. If I go ahead and kick West and 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 CSAC and and all these these right wingers out of this stuff and say you don't think like us they win they win because we stay at each other's throat and then they can continue doing everything because they'll have West defending their right flank and they'll have Rudnan defending their left well not Rudnan Rudnan is a, is a lefty we're talking they'll have the centrist defending their left flank that's how it works people so what I put as my last paragraph of that little sub block that little sub post is the following we still have avenues to communicate with each other here's one here is one here is one politics done right so remember share it share it. let people hear the story let people understand what's going on we still have avenues to communicate with each other it is incumbent on us not to give up our brothers and sisters humanity those who profit from the chaos need to factionalize us. It is incumbent on those who see the big picture 
to continue the engagement otherwise those dependent on our confused state will profit I mean I hope I sent that out to probably six seven thousand people today I hope I hope people take heed on that because that is the game before I continue reading all the good stuff you guys have been posting again let me go ahead and give you my new my, my uh, what is it called my ask folks if you are just joining us please remember if you are on YouTube please click that join button we are actually we had a small decline I guess it's the weekend of membership on our YouTube channel so not YouTube channel YouTube the subscriptions so please go ahead on YouTube and hit that join button we need I like I said we need a thousand people we only have about 300 right now please go ahead and hit that join button on YouTube and do whatever you can there we cannot run this this program this process without you if you're not on YouTube if you're on Twitch or if you're on Facebook live or if you're on uh, PayPal or rather if you're on, on Twitter you can go ahead and still join our YouTube posse by going to politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube alternatively you can support us on Patreon where we need another thousand members as well that is politicsdoneright.com slash Patreon politicsdoneright.com slash Patreon Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N P-A-T-R-E-O-N uh, the, the, the way the biggest bang for the buck is PayPal of course politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal uh, because this, the middleman in that case takes the least. Politicsonright.com slash PayPal. Uh, just go ahead and um, either one-time support or you can do a series of support. We've started getting people uh, for going, <laughs> for going um, uh, Patreon and going with PayPal. But again, it, it's it's one option. And you know, we've always allowed membership on Facebook. Now, Facebook is not a very popular one so far, but you can always support us as well at, at politicsandright.com slash uh, Facebook to join uh, our subscriptions on Facebook. Uh, likewise, our books, you can get our books and they're well worth it on politicsandright.com slash books, politicsandright.com slash books, and our hoodies and T-shirts like the one I have here and many other hoodies, etc. Cups designed by our own posse here. Members of the posse design some of our stuff. Go to politicsandright.com slash store. Politicsandright.com slash store. And all, all encompassing support. We can find, if you don't want to check out all these links individually, we have one set of links. It's politicsandright.com slash support. And that is the way you support us all over the place okay let me go ahead and get more uh get what you guys have been saying now but i bet i want to make sure i get to the top it better there's no echo on switch okay okay thank you very much um uh courtney the slp muchisimas gracias how are you doing courtney happy holidays uh abk says yeah the shining hill is crumbling around us e2247 says just up to date greta thornburg on the state of climate movement Bruce says, was one reason for the Revolutionary War that some people in the colonies wanted slavery and England was rapidly eliminating it. Uh, yes, that's according to the 1619 Project. That's one of the messages that I think if you go to the New York Times and read it, that's it. Now, a lot of people like to um, make it more benevolent, taxation without representation and Boston Tea Party, all that good stuff, right? But we know there's always folklore when it comes to how some country got its independence and you know well as they said the history is written by the victor and if the victor writes the history there they won't say ah oh, the founding fathers were plutocrats who didn't want to share their wealth and therefore they decided that hey we're in america a place that with milk and honey and we want all the milk and honey you know but that's a thought okay brother west says my right winger says we dare you to kill Trump. No, why would we do? We don't believe in killing anybody. And I know you feel, West, that he's the best president ever. I'd like you to tell me what has he done for you. Let me know. I'll be interested to find out exactly what he's done for you. ABQ says, E2247, is there a mirror for that Wapo Greta Thornburg article? Oh, he found it. Got it. And Wes also says, uh, guns save 2 million lives each year. Yeah, I know. If you really believe that, 
If you really believe that, I will ask you so kindly to sit back in a dark room. Sit back in a dark room. And then logically go from a country with a lot of guns, the amount of killings we have every year in America, and let's go to every other industrialized country in the world where they have very strong restrictions on guns, and notice that there are virtually no deaths from gunshots, no deaths from murdering by gun, etc. And go to even countries where there are places where you there are gorillas and compare it to us. You know, um, we can throw all the evidence in front of you. Whether you want to accept it or not, my friend, Brother West, that's up to you. But um, whenever it, the, 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 the gun companies laugh themselves to the bank because many times they can't believe how, how gullible some of their followers are. Just think about La Pierre. Uh, Wayne LaPerriere was taking your money and going on yatch and spending over $10,000 a year. Actually, I'm sorry. What am I thinking? Over $100,000 a year on suits. I don't know how I could lowball the guy so badly. Your money. Your $50 or $100 a month to be a part of the Rifle Association, the NRA. And he's living it up. And most of the people are just scraping to pay their bills. AVQ says, Greta, Greta Thunberg, we need to understand that 1.5 is not a safe level. Already, as it is now 1.1 or 1.2, people are already suffering. Countless people are already bearing the brunt of the climate crisis and have been doing so for a long time. So this is not a future problem. We need to understand this here and now. It's already happening. It has been happening for a long time. And many people have been bearing witness to this and trying to sell this, but they have been ignored. Yeah, Greta, but you know what else is not a good thing? 60 Minutes did a piece yesterday on global warming, and I figured it was going to be a piece that was, ah, you know, that they'll try to do a measured piece, etc. And in effect, it was about the wine industry and global warming climate change and anybody who was watching that thing would go ahead and think that global warming is something that we can live with at the pace it's going to happen because there are wineries now in England where it used to be too cold to have wineries and in Champagne uh, France where it's now too hot to get good wine their wines are I mean to get a lot of wine their wines are actually getting better because the change in climate is making these things ripe quicker and they can get better product. Wow. So there we go, the capitalists again. We can somehow make a, even though a lot of the poor wineries are going out of business, those of us who make those premiums, we can, we can you know, hey, we can do fine. And these guys were never too concerned about climate change, the ones in England, right? Because, hey, we can grow wine here now. And what I think was irresponsible about the story is that they should have brought climate scientists and say, yes, there are going to be short-term gains, but the overall effect on the planet is going to be disastrous. We, the people who put all the carbon in the air, we will profit immensely by trying to mitigate the changes in the weather, the changes in the coastlines, etc. We're going to have the technology to help those who can afford it. But Samoa and all those other places where it had no problem, they didn't throw all this carbon into the air. They will be underwater. Underwater. Peggy Lopez says, in the 1960s, Sonja Johnson was excommunicated from the Mormon church for coming out in favor of the Equal Rights Amendment. She also was the first woman to run for president with the federal money. Cool. Thanks for that enlightenment. Uh, we got Bill Gates. West says Bill Gates made $30 billion 2021, but only $2 billion in 2020. Big farmer. Well, I don't know what you mean by that, uh, West, but I imagine there's some, some message that you want to say there. Peggy Lopez also says Sanja told a story about how the power drivers of this country had themselves in a bionic fort and as we clamored outside the fort, 
they built the fort stronger. That's pretty much what I'm saying. These guys will be covered. When Sonja left politics, she said she could not fight the power elites anymore because it seemed to just give them more power. She posed the question, what would happen to the powerful if we ignored? By the way, and Peggy continues, by the way, I was at the Democratic event in, 19, in the 1960s where the police, for the first time, came out marching in unison, carrying their guns in military formation. They began using sticks on heads. Yeah, I, I, I was too young, but I saw all the videos of that, and it is sad. Uh, Courtney SLP says, Happy Holidays, Egberto and PDR Passi. Thank you. Uh, that, is, that is amazing. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, Courtney, bear with me as I... Bruce says, can we make the changes required, at least some of them, without sacrificing democracy to provide the common good? Yes, we can. We are, we are what I call an inflection point. And this is where all of us in the independent media, all of us, all of us, I've been trying to get some of folks to work more in concert, but all of us in the independent media have to pretty much get to the people directly. In other words, let me give an example. The people who listen to Politics Done Right, those who listen, let's say, on, on podcasts and on, on, on directly on YouTube or Twitch or Twitter or whatever, you know, they, they need to be, they, we need to make them the preachers, right? You got to go out there and tell the message to others as well. Because as it turns out, the mainstream media, it's not that they don't want to do it, or it's not that, uh, you know, we don't have great people like Katie Turr and and great people like uh, Ali Belshi and others, they're, they're good, 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 good reporters. There's just so much they can say. Okay, Bruce, I, you uh, don't look up. I was going to talk about that. It's funny because my daughter made me watch Don't Look Up this weekend, but it's not only that. Uh, brother Tom Hartman watched it this weekend too, and he wrote the blog that I was going to write about it. So I'm going to talk about it in the last 10 minutes of the show because he wrote a great piece about it. Uh, Brother Tom Hartman, you know I love the guy. He really he, he really has his piece and cues all together. Michael Rudin says, Mike Cisak, Mexico charged their constitution, change their constitution to amend gun rights in accordance with the police regulations. I'm good with trying something similar here and don't tell me an amendment can't be amended. Of course it can. An amendment can always be amended. In fact, the later amendment supersedes the previous amendment. It's period, that's constitutional. Rose Williams, welcome aboard. And she says, hi, everyone. You know, I didn't see that message from Michael Cisak. So uh, thank you for pointing that out for me. Uh, oh, there's Mike Cisak. Egberto, I have compared other countries on the gun control issue. Mexico is very strict on gun control, but they have extremely high murder rate. Again, let me give an, a, a classic example. Chicago. Chicago has an extremely high uh, murder rate. And you know why it stays high? And you know why nobody worries too much about Chicago? Let me explain why. You go, I've been to Chicago several times. Okay, been, I stayed in Chicago. I stayed in different neighborhoods in Chicago, two or three times actually. And the one thing about it is I never saw violence in Chicago. Every time I went to Chicago, Chicago was like great, right? Cold as hell, but great. And the reason why is that violence in Chicago is in a certain part of the city. And that violence holds there, right? It's in the a distressed area, poor area, an area where there is a lot of violence and gang and miseducation, etc. And what these cops do is they just, they just keep that area in lockdown. Not, you don't see the lockdown, but that area is in lockdown that those people can't leave there and go into the areas that we really like. You know, you, you, know, you drive that strip along the, the, um, the lake, hey, nobody, nobody, you, you can walk that lake at one in the morning without any problems. Guess who did it? I did, cold, cold as hell. No problem, people are having fun, you know, no problem. But the crime rate is high because they are murdering a lot of young people people of color and they're keeping it out of sight it makes the news and the reason it makes the news big time is because of a reason ABQ the, you have that the murder rate in Chicago is number 28 in the country I tell you something a lot of people don't realize because based on based on those numbers because Chicago is such a big city right uh, that's true 
But I mean, when you have a murder in Gary, Indiana, or a murder in uh, in Timbuktu, Texas, it it skews the numbers. But when we talk about big cities, it's one of the most dangerous big cities in the areas that have the murder rate. I mean, the murder. So that is, Carl Cox is with us right now. He says, "A hey, better, better, better late than never." Thank you for being here. But anyway, so that that's what I wanted to say. Um, a masticator says, "At least the money to the NRA is voluntary. Texas are not." In fact, if doesn't pay, make no sense, brother. All right, uh, Courtney, the SLP says, crime and poverty go on hand in hand. Yes, go to Appalachia. You know, it's amazing, right? I, I, I told a story about Appalachia and the murder rates and how the same, the same ills that you have, let's say, in the ghettos and the barrios, you have in Appalachia. And what was interesting is that somebody sent me a note and said yes Egberto but even when we when we normalize for when we normalize for uh, wealth and that sort of stuff the crime rates in the areas of people of color are still higher than let's say the crime rates in Appalachia and then I remind the person BS in BS out if you go to the ghetto and you touch something you will get arrested and you get a record in in these areas that are mostly white what you get is Okay, you do it. Hey, Johnny, just go home, okay? Just go home. That, that type of behavior between the cops is more than enough to erase any kind of discrepancy because if you have BS data in, the results are going to be BS. And that's why when the FBI comes out with certain numbers on crime, I always say normalize that number with prejudice. It's very very important and rose williams agrees uh let's see uh abk is like better yeah that city is more than 100,000 population exactamente all right let's go ahead and yeah but you know if you have yeah we'll talk about that one later anyway i want to get to brother uh, uh his newsletter uh tom hartman because i loved it i i you know I, this morning when i got it in my email i said damn tom i was going to write about that today and then it's already there, so I said, ah, he, at least he gave me some time that I didn't have to spend to do it. So let me go ahead and see if I can click on his newsletter. Actually, it's not that's my newsletter. His newsletter is called Don't Want You to Look Up, same title of the, the show, the program, right? And I, I found it interesting because here's what it is. Tom says, on Christmas Eve, Louise and I watched on Netflix the brilliant Don't Look Up starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence, written and produced by Adam McKay and David Sirota. Love David Sirota, although, you know, what can I say? Every now and then, David, you know what he does, but that's, that's cool. So um, I think it's important for us to understand that movie. That movie was a, a classic representation of what's going on today to a certain level of extreme. All right, but it was it was well done. So, what was Tom Hartman's thoughts on that? He said, he, he, and I'm just going to read his highlights because it's important. He said, uh, on Christmas Eve, I, I watched it with Louise. Uh, it's been lauded as a metaphor for how we are dealing with climate change in the face of petro billionaire and corporate funded disinformation campaign. But it's so much more than that. Um, Anybody who wants to watch it that doesn't want the, the, the story, I'm going to tell you the storyline, so I'm going to do it in one minute. So stop listening for one minute if you don't want to hear this. But the idea is there is a there is a, a uh, asteroid coming to the States, and at first they want to hide the fact that it's coming, not to the States, so the Earth. They want to hide the fact that this asteroid is going to destroy the Earth um, because you know, they don't believe it. Or, you know, these politicians, nothing is real anymore. So... When they really realize that it's true, they decided to create the necessary technology to jump up, and all in six months, man, to jump up there and blow things up. As they take off to go to the asteroid, everything turned around, they turned back. I guess they have better technology in six months that we've developed over 50 years because the shuttle can't turn around like that, but they did, and they didn't go blow up the thing because a capitalist company figured out that this, that, that asteroid had a whole lot of rare earth and other materials worth trillions of dollars. So instead, they're going to go up there and do a calculated blow up of this asteroid. But here's the kicker, because 
there are a lot there's a part that I don't I don't even notice inside of Tom Hartman's piece. I need to tell you about the kicker. What they intended to do is blow up this asteroid into manageable pieces. These manageable pieces would fall to Earth and into the ocean. And of course, with the amount of energy in something that big, it would have created multiple tsunamis across the world. They were willing to sacrifice millions of humanity, millions of hu people on this world, because that asteroid was going to bring a whole lot of rare earth and other materials after it landed in the sea and they mined it. Folks, the macabre nature of that story, I don't even think a lot of folks saw it immediately. That when you are flying in an airplane, there were trade-offs made that says, we will allow a certain amount of crashes we will allow a certain amount of bridges to fall. We will allow a certain amount of Americans, a certain amount of the people in the world to die because of our economic system. We will not supply the rest of the world, and it, that, that's a part of my newsletter as well, we will not supply the rest of the world with a vaccine because it will reduce the profits of our shareholders and as such, Given that we won't vaccinate the rest of the world, and since we are dependent on trade with the rest of the world, it means these people, whether vaccinated or not, will come to America and kill Americans, right? So in effect, our plutocracy is putting a price on every American's life because of our economic system. And that sometimes the movie didn't do a clear enough job at times to really express that. I thought, wow, why didn't they say that? You know, when they talked about, uh, when, when they showed the part about the girl not being respected, you know, it showed it showed a certain level of sexism. Can you link to the article of blowing up a metal rich asteroid and a manageable pieces and crash? Oh, it's it's not it's not a part, it is actually the story itself. It's the story itself. Mike C. Sex says, I still don't get why, when it comes to asteroids endangering the earth, that they want to fly explosives up that way they can just uh, use super laser. No, that's not true. The amount of energy required by a super laser and first having to penetrate the atmosphere, the diffusion that you'll get of energy, it's not practical. And just throwing the laser at it, the, uh, something that is several kilometers wide, we don't have the laser power to do that. What you have to do is you have to blow it off course. And the truth of the matter is that if it's six months out, you can actually do a course correction of a micro angle. And that micro angle course correction would have it fly right past the earth. They didn't even have to touch it. They could have just blown it up. No, we don't have it, Mike Cisak. Just do the computation as far as the amount of energy that you need for a laser, how much energy you'll have to get through the atmosphere. It, it is not as simple as you say at all. At night, you notice when you see light bends, that, that is the same kind of things that happens to lasers. You know, that's just... That is, in fact, that is how um, the, the theory of relativity was actually uh, calculated and to be true. But that's another story for another time. Peggy Lopez says, putting a low price on human life, it is better to allow climate change to continue high profits for those causes of the climate change. Wow, girl, you hit the nail on the head. So, I mean, uh, I, I left a link to the article from uh, Tom Hartman read the whole article and go to uh, read it at my site and then then go subscribe to Tom Hartman's Substack. Subscribe to my Substack as well, I should say that. Subscribe to my Substack as well, but uh, please go ahead and subscribe to Tom Hartman's Substack. Let me give you, let, I think I have a, I can get you a copy of my Substack here. Uh, let me see if this one will work. Um, uh, let's see, bear with me as I get back. I am trying to get back, people. I'm trying to get back. I'm trying to get back. I'm a bit slow. There we go. Here's a link to my Substack. Go ahead and subscribe to that as well um, because we can actually get a lot. But uh, like I said, no, subscribe to my Substack. There's also a link, subscribe to Brother Tom Hartman's Substack. Uh, we're really trying, what I try to do, and I wish more would do it, is 
I am, uh, as far as being a progressive um, messenger out there with a platform, uh, what I try to do is I try to enhance every single progressive platform I can. That's why you see me promote Daily Coast, Up Ed News, Color of Dreams, or other Common Dreams, uh, and all these people. Because and I, I I wish at some time we'll get some reciprocity. I always have reciprocity with Brother Tom Hartman. We do each other's show often. Um, but uh, I, I, I wish there was um, a bit more of that. Anyhow, we are coming to the end of the program. It's at 5 o'clock hour, so you know i got to get out of here. Before, I'm going to leave you with uh, two, two links, my PayPal link. I'd like to ask you guys to support our program. Uh, the PayPal link is politicsdoneright.com slash PayPal. The link to subscribe to our YouTube. If you're, if you're on YouTube, just click the Join button and become a member. If not, you can go ahead and click politicsdoneright.com slash YouTube. And the catch-all for all of the ways to support Politics and Right is politicsandright.com slash support. Politicsandright.com slash support. Michael Rudnan is saying bye-bye. E2247 says, today's visit was the greatest ever for once. Thank you all. I just love that you say that every single time. So if every time you watch it, a new one, it's the greatest, you melt my heart because that means I, I hope I am getting better and better and better. So thank you so kindly. Folks, my name is Egberto Willis. This is Politics Done Right. And you guys know how I end this baby. I am what? Out! Welcome to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willis. This is a progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, progressive, conservative, or otherwise, you get to hear your point of view. We are an independent media outlet that unlike mainstream media beholden to corporations, we only owe allegiance to you. Remember, you can also send me a tweet at E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willis. Let us engage. It is politics done right.